Hi guys, bringing you a video today uh, based on a question received on the Home Guard video I recently uploaded, uh, the one man's kit video on the uh, Home Guard uniform and equipment, which regarded British battle dress patterns. And it the question started, sort of the way the question was phrased, perpetuated a, a myth of British battle dress, British uh, manufactured battle dress, that there were only two patterns, quote 1937 pattern and quote 1940 pattern. Now this is not a uh, particularly in-depth video on battle dress. This is a, a short video geared towards reenacting, reenactors, living history, whatever you want to call it. The three, outwardly three basic patterns of battle dress uniform you see. There are variations within the patterns. There are also uh, extra items made for the commandos and parachutists, so pairs of trousers specifically designed for their use and so on. We're not going to be going into that today. We're going to be going over the three basic patterns there were variations within these patterns. We're not going to get into those. We're just going to look at the outward differences um, because that's obviously the most important thing um, for, for living history and reenacting from that point of view is, is the, the outward appearance. There are variations in inward, inside the number of inside pockets and things that these came with and so on for the jackets and variations in buttons and all sorts of different things. We're not going to get into that. We're going to look at the three basic patterns and, and just have a look at those and, and differentiate them just to dispel the myth of the Roni being the two sort of 1937 and 40 pattern uh, battle dresses. And first of all, we're going to have a look at the blouses. So this is the first battle dress pattern introduced by the British Army, Battle Dress Surge. This is a reproduction. It's the only reproduction item we'll be looking at in this video. All the rest is original. Uh, this is a Panther store reproduction. It's a very good, very accurate reproduction. So it is suitable for the, the point of looking at the pattern. As I say, the first battle dress uh, pattern introduced, this is commonly referred to as 1937 pattern, along with the actual 1940 pattern, which we'll look at in a minute. Both of them are quite similar. So you have the pleated front pockets, all the buttons are, are concealed, so you have a piece of drill underneath which the button buttons through. Same on the front, it's a fly front, so you've got, as you can see, the buttons button through a piece of drill behind the, the surge there. Unlined collar is the key distinction feature of this pattern of blouse, and on the shoulder here you have these little flat um, early uh, shank buttons which are also used on early denim uniform as well so that's a good uh, way of seeing these uh, the all the battle dress blouses have that we'll be looking at have buttons buttonholes to button onto the trousers and as you can see they're also um, concealed at the back here as you can see looking underneath there um, and obviously concealed buttons even on the cuffs so that's the the battle dress surge we'll have a look now at 1940 pattern Okay, so here we have 1940 pattern, and this is the uniform I was wearing uh, at the Rufford Abbey Home Guard event recently, hence it still has the, the Home Guard insignia. Um, as you can see, very similar to the Battle Dress Surge uniform. Uh, one thing I didn't show you on the Battle Dress Surge, which I will in just a second, is the bu buckle. That is a change. The biggest visual change is the, the lined collar. As you can see here, the collar now has a drill lining to it. It seems strange that the original, the, the first Battle Dress Surge, doesn't have a lined collar because the service dress used at that point did. I don't know why they didn't line the collar, uh, but the 1940 pattern changed that. This is 1940 pattern. What a lot of people refer to as 1940 pattern, we're going to have a look at in just a minute, with all the exposed buttons and everything. So this is introduced in 1940, and you would see this post Dunkirk primarily um, up to about 1942. Uh, this was the only battle dress other than battle dress surge, be, surge being issued. So primarily this battle dress surge wasn't in production for very long. However, these aren't hard set dates. You see Battle Dress Surge still being worn late in the war. There's fantastic photographs of Fusilier Payne in France in 1944. He's wearing a Battle Dress Surge blouse. You can see that the collar is unlined because he has the collar open. Uh, so anything early can be worn late war, pretty much. Uh, they would still, it's just a Battle Dress. They're going to issue what they have in stock, in store, and they may still have the odd bit of old stuff floating around, which would be issued out. So there's nothing to say late war. You couldn't be wearing an early war blouse. Uh, trousers etc so these are progressively introduced they never really replace the previous patterns although obviously as the war drags on and the, the army gets bigger you're going to see more of the newer patterns being issued out so if you're doing late war reenacting it's probably more sensible to get a later war pattern and so on and obviously if you're doing early war you need the early stuff uh, so this is 1940 pattern still has all the concealed buttons and you can see here for the for the, the back as well for the buttoning onto the uh, the, the trousers and the cuffs and everything still have the cut has slightly changed but that's not visually particularly noticeable but the cut has changed uh, and you still have obviously the concealed buttons on the pockets and the pleats and obviously the line collar is the big change there at the top uh, we have different buttons on the epaulets you now have the 
uh, sort of dished in sh shank buttons, slightly different shape, and these are common to later denims and obviously um, also um, you see those uh, used on the, the trousers, which we'll have a look at in a minute. And the another change is the buckle. Now you can see here, and we've got the slightly more complicated tooth buckle now on the waist belt. Um, and I will get the battle dress surge back in here because I didn't show you the buckle on that. You can see the difference between the two. You have a simple sort of loop buckle on the with a sliding center pin on the battle dress surge, and this later uh, battle dress 9040 pattern. You have the the later designer buckle. So that's 9040 pattern, and we'll have a look at the next pattern now, the third pattern. So here we have, we have what reenactors commonly refer to as 1940 pattern. The other two are both collectively referred to as 1937 pattern, which is incorrect. And this is referred to as 1940 pattern, which isn't technically incorrect. The labels often and majoritarily say 1940 pattern. This, however, the utility uniform. So as you can see, it's far more utilitarian. There's less, less cloth used, the cut is reduced. Um, and you also see these labeled 1942 pattern, which is when it was introduced, so 42. But this, by the end of the war, is going to be becoming the more common because this was the one that was manufactured obviously from that point on, uh, not that the contracts that were let would stop immediately, but by late war, this is becoming very common. Um, so you've, you've obviously got exposed buttons down the front. This is the most visually distinctive of the three. No pleats, uh, button through on the pockets. Um, the button holes at the back for the trousers go straight through. They're not concealed. And obviously the cuffs button through as well. So all the concealment of the buttons has disappeared. The pleats have disappeared. It's very simple. There's less material in it. You don't have early patterns of this to say there are variations within the pattern. We won't go too much into that, but a visual outward difference. Some of the early ones have the shank button that we looked at on the 1940 pattern. But by late, uh, later on, uh, later production, you've gone over to having the four hole buttons on the epaulets as well. And obviously still have the lined collar there. So that's the 1940 utility or 1942 pattern um, battle dress blouse, which was obviously becoming standard by late war and was worn through post-war. The trousers we'll look at are actually 1946 dated. Um, before the post-war uh, patterns of battle dress were introduced, but that's a subject for another video. So that's the three patterns of blouse, the three basic patterns of blouse. As I say, particularly with this, there are variations within this pattern, but we're not going to get into that today. This is just a basic look at the three major differences. Okay, so now we'll look at the corresponding trousers um, from battle dress surge, which is what we have here through to 1940 utility pattern or 1942 pattern, whichever way you want to, to call it. These are original pair of battle dress surge trousers. Um, as you can see, following the blouse, the buttons are uh, concealed on the pockets. Um, you have a matte pocket on the front of the leg here, which also has a concealed button. Uh, the dressing pocket is this very this distinctive design here, which is small with a single pleat down the front, no button. Um, and obviously you have belt loops on, on the trousers as well, um, and brass buttons inside for the braces. You see all the, the buttons are brass. There are variations in the buttons and things and so on, but we won't go into that this video it's that's not the purpose of this video is just to show you outward basic outward differences that will help you understand the three basic patterns um, and then you have tabs at the ankle to draw the ankle in so you can button that tight and you see like that um, so and they're quite wide cut as you can see um, as battle dress was in the trousers they do slim down later on but again that's that's a slight variation pattern change the labels missing unfortunately from these but you can see belt loops all the way around and these are the buttons three buttons across the back here are for buttoning the blouse onto the trousers. So you have those there as well. So that's the uh, the battle dress surge trousers and we'll bring in the um, we'll bring in the next pattern now. Okay, so here we have uh, battle dress 1940 pattern trousers. Um, and the biggest visual change, or as you can probably see already, is you've got to change the dressing pocket. Big dressing pocket with two pleats down the front, much bigger, uh, gives more room for that. And the shank button, similar to used on the epaulettes in the 1940 pattern uniform, you can see there. Um, the, the, the domed, the dished in shank button. Uh, still brass buttons on this, although originally this had this one surviving. Uh, it had at least some of them with shared eyes steel. So this is a sort of utility 1940 pattern before the actual utility came in. So you're already getting away from brass buttons. Again, that's a variation that happens across these. You'll find all sorts of different things like that. But the basic pattern, the biggest change is, is this uh, dressing pocket there. You still have the matte pocket on the leg. It still has the concealed button underneath there. And you still have uh, the tabs at the ankle there. These are button round, obviously, again, to, to draw the ankles in. So there we are. Belt loops, again, round there, buttoned belt loops on there. Um, and this, again, there are variations within this pattern, but we won't get into that. Um, this is just a basically to show you that you still have the concealed buttons on the pockets, 
um, the the back pocket and the the map pocket, but the obviously you've changed over to this later pattern of um, uh, the the dressing pocket there with the two pleats gives you more room to fit the dressing in. So we'll have a look now at the 9040 utility stroke 9042 pattern. Okay, so here we have the the utility trousers. As you can see, very utilitarian. The belt loops have gone. Uh, all the buttons are now the 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 sort of plastic, the early type of plastic. Um, uh, You've got uh, obviously the dressing pocket, the later pattern of dressing pocket, as you had on the 9040 pattern. But now the back pocket, as you can see, the button's exposed, so it's no longer it's button through rather than having that flap underneath to to allow it to um, to button in a concealed manner. And likewise here on the trousers, the map pocket's basically the same, but you have the button through on the flap. Uh, I didn't show you on the 9040 pattern, but these again have the three. This might be missing one actually in the middle, but uh, yeah, just two remaining. You've got the two buttons there for buttoning onto the the, the blouse. Um, obviously. And uh, same inside, all the buttons are the same. Now this is uh, no longer brass, uh, it's plastic material. And you've got the, the four of those, uh, sorry, eight, uh, six of those, uh, two for each uh, uh, fastening on the brace in, uh, braces in there, or suspenders as the US, uh, they'd be called in the US. Um, so that's the utility pattern trousers. And I think, as I say, the label's easy to look at on these. It's, it's external. If I bring that up to the camera, you can see there they're actually dated 1946. So these, this wartime pattern, was manufactured right through until 1946 when 1946 pattern took over uh, but that's again a topic for another video so we've sort of i hope we've rattled through that fairly quickly and just given the basic outline of the three different the three basic patterns as i say there's there's more to it than i've shown in this video um but for reenacting purposes it helps to dispel that myth of of or hopefully helps to dispel that myth of there just being the two 1940 and 1937 pattern which it's not quite as simple as that, and it's more complicated than I've even shown here, as I say. But this will hopefully help people getting into British reenacting uh, see the, the three patterns, three basic patterns, a little more uh, readily, a little more easily. So I hope you found that interesting. And as I always say, until next time, bye for now.